Hey guys, welcome to another Friday video. Today we're checking out the AMD FX6300. And this is the second time I'm doing this video. I produced one a couple of months ago, but then the cheap LGA 2011 and also first generation Ryzen parts became available on AliExpress. And the value with the prices at the time was just not good enough to recommend. But prices have slipped and although the performance is a bit of a mixed bag, uh, the FX platform is now cheap enough to give it a second look. As always, this is more of a celebration of the FX processes rather than a recommendation of going out and buying these parts. So you might have such a system and you want to see what it can do in 2019. So in this video, we will of course check out the processor in more detail. We will go over the specifications. We have benchmarks, power consumption figures, and of course some gameplay. But we will also talk about prices and other components. Uh, let's start with the prices. The main board can be had for 34 US dollars, including free shipping. The processor for 30 dollars, and you can get special AMD only RAM, which will not work on Intel motherboards. This is a 16 gigabyte RAM kit, and you're looking at 40 US dollars. So the whole bundle, roughly 100 US dollars. For a change, this is a processor I bought back in the day. I bought it in 2014. Uh, the appeal was it had six threads and I used it for video capturing and it did a fantastic job. The motherboard eventually died. Uh, the highlight of the main board I used at the time was that it had a floppy controller, but I switched to USB floppy drives instead. So I'm using a different system. So the processor not from AliExpress, but you can pick one up for 30 US dollars. So there's a bit of controversy going on with the cores and the threads. There are three modules and six threads. And there was actually recently a lawsuit AMD settled uh, paying $12 million to users that purchased various FX series of processors. And the claim was uh, yeah, basically uh, misleading advertising. So there's a shared FPU unit within a dual core module and that does not perform the same as having a proper dual core module where you have two dedicated FPUs. So we're getting a decent amount of threads. We're also getting a decent enough clock speed. 3.5 gigahertz is the base clock. Maximum turbo is 4.1 gigahertz. And in games, we're seeing clock speeds of 3.8 gigahertz. We've got a 95 watt TDP. The CPU used to cost $132 at launch. So that was actually a pretty decent price. For cooling, I'm using a 125 watt box cooler for an AMD Phenom 2 processor. Worked great in the project. And once again, I'm using the IC Graphite Thermal Pad. This is the larger version, 40 by 40 millimeters, and also worked really well for this project. We saw very decent temperatures. So let's have a closer look at the main board. This is a Micro ATX Asus M5A78LM LX3 Plus, and I bought it for 34 US dollars, including shipping. We have a 760G Northbridge with integrated graphics. Haven't tested it, it might not actually work under Windows 10, not sure about that. But the main board is compatible with the FX processors and the 6300 is officially supported. So we have a PCI Express 16X and 1X slot as well as a PCI slot. There are four SATA 2 ports. We have two memory modules for DDR3 dual channel configuration. At the back, we have two PS2. There's a serial, VGA, four USB 2, gigabit ethernet, and audio. For a budget mainboard, the BIOS is surprisingly decent. We have options for overclocking, including raising the voltage. All the tests in this video, however, are done with the stock BIOS defaults. And a quick word about the RAM. We can use uh, what's called AMD only memory. These are cheaper basically and only work for AMD main boards. And you're looking at $40 for a 16 gigabyte kit with DDR3 1600. For the graphics card, we've got an AMD Radeon RX 580 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. To make sure we're not bottlenecked by the video card, we are testing most of the games at 720p. So just to keep that in mind. 
for storage i'm using a one terabyte king spec ssd so far this has been serving me pretty well haven't had any issues and it's large enough to fit all the games for testing and we are once again using the Deepcool DQ650M power supply. I make sure I use the power supply in most of my videos so we can compare the power consumption figures. So I measured 54 watts idle. This is, this is the entire system sitting on the desktop. And running Cinebench, I saw a load of 136 watts. And now let's have a look at some benchmark results. Cinebench R15, we're getting 414. In Cinebench R20, we're getting 882. In Firestrike, we're getting an overall score of 8,351 with 14,640 graphics and 5,583 for physics. I also ran the Blender benchmark and it took 1 hour and 32 minutes. And now let's have a look at some gameplay. We begin with games that are heavily optimized for weak processors using the Vulkan API. First up, we have Doom. So running at 720p to make sure that the video card is not holding anything back. We have configured the uh, Vulkan API, high detail preset, and we're getting over 100 FPS. So this is how it should be done. It's a good looking game, uh, nice and responsive, and we're getting a very decent performance. We're getting a similar experience with Strange Brigade. This is a newer title. Once again, 720p with the high detail preset and also using the Vulkan API and same uh, experience compared to Doom, we're getting over 100 FPS. So another game that runs still really well on the FX 6300. Older games also run really well. Here we have Dirt 3. This one is configured to run at 1080p with ultra details and 4x anti-aliasing and yeah, over 100 FPS. So if older games is your thing, then the FX platform is fantastic. Uh, it is still compatible with Windows XP, so there are aspects of using it for retro gaming as well. Hitman 2 is an interesting game. I tested two levels. Night Call comes first, and this one seems to be quite playable. We're getting over 60 FPS throughout the entire level. But when we try something more demanding, like the finish line level, here we have a lot of IPCs running around, and the demand on the processor uh, is just totally different. We are, yeah, sometimes struggling to get 30 FPS, so this is more a console experience, and there are quite nasty frame time spikes as well. I also tested Project Cars 2. This is the demo version. We are running at 720p with a mix of yeah high details mostly. And I tested two tracks. First up is the Formula 1 track. This one doesn't run too bad. We are getting consistently over 60 FPS. But there's a second track where there's some uh, rain. So there's a weather simulation uh, thread or process running in the background. And here the performance is not quite as good. We're getting over 60 FPS, just over 60 FPS most of the time, but there are a few dips below. I also tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running at 720p with the DirectX 12 API and high details. Seems to be very playable, over 60 FPS. So this is a game that doesn't seem to require a very uh, strong processor in terms of what the uh, threats can do. It seems to be able to take advantage of all the uh, threats that the FX6300 has. Now, the uh, performance shown in the video is only uh, a section of the game, so later aspects of the game might be more demanding, so just keep that in mind. I then tried the search. This game runs at 720p, also with the high details preset, and it runs at just under 60 FPS most of the time. So not quite that smooth PC gaming experience, but at least we're getting performance similar to that of a console. So if you put a V-Sync or a frame cap on there running at 30 FPS, you will get a very similar experience. Next up, we have Fortnite running at 720p with all details maxed out, epic details, and seems to be quite playable. We do get nasty frame time spikes, however, with uh, stutters here and there, but most of the time, this is actually quite playable. 
And finally, Apex Legends, running at 720p with maximum details. Most of the time, we're getting just over 60 FPS. So definitely not a machine you want to run this game at if you've got a high refresh rate monitor. But if you only have a 60 hertz panel, uh, yeah, tweak the details a little bit. You will be able to enjoy this game even on the old FX6300. So guys, let's summarize this video. The FX6300 is really my favorite FX processor. It's got a nice mix, a good balance of a low price, uh, having six threads and a high enough clock speed. And it also supports modern CPU instructions that some games use. So that means pretty much every game will at least run. Some games might not run very well, but tweaking the details here and there, they should still be playable, at least if you aim for 30 FPS experience. The price is also very good. For around 100 US dollars, including free postage, you can get the mainboard, CPU, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. But with cheap parts, you have to be very careful with prices. Often spending another 20, 30 dollars can get you something much better. And just around the corner, we have first generation Ryzen parts. So if you spend 57 dollars, you get an A320 mainboard. A Ryzen 5 1400, you're looking at $44 and 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, $34. So yes, that is a little bit more money, but you are getting a much more modern platform that will definitely outperform the FX6300. There's of course also the LGA 2011 platform. Here you can get a motherboard for around $60. You can get the 6-core 2630v2 for around $30 and DDR3 registered ECC memory is also dirt cheap. With the prices for the FX parts now having come down, it is quite an interesting platform. Is it something I would recommend you to rush out and buy? Probably not. So this video is once again just uh, an experiment seeing what's possible. Maybe you've got some parts lying around or the mainboard failed and you're not sure if it's worth getting a replacement mainboard. Um, we saw that many games will still run fine on this platform, but if you try the latest and greatest games, then the performance will suffer and you have to settle for a 30 FPS experience. So all up, this is a very interesting processor. Also interesting in uh, CPU history with the lawsuit and uh, modules and cores and all that confusion with the shared resources and yeah a favorite processor of mine when I bought it in 2014 I was really happy with the performance it lasted me several years until the mainboard failed so yeah I definitely have a soft spot for this processor and I think the FX6300 is a really nice sweet spot and I would pick it over one of the 8000 series models for example. And guys, that's pretty much it for this video. As always, eager to hear your thoughts. There are a lot of you out there that are still rocking a machine with an FX processor. And yeah, thanks to the modern CPU instructions, uh, uh, most of the software should run just fine. But share your thoughts, leave your story down below in the comments. I read every single comment, I might not answer, uh, I don't have too much time, but I do read every single comment. And as always, if there's something else you want to see on the channel, leave it down below. I will make, uh, yeah, I keep making a list with all topics and eventually I will come around to covering all your requests. And the usual YouTube stuff, if you found the video interesting, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Give it a like, leave a comment, share it with your friends, and I shall see you soon with another weekly Friday video.